This video is about the trace of a matrix. If you have an n by n square matrix A, the trace of the matrix, written TR of A, is the sum of the entries on the diagonal. By diagonal, I mean the diagonal that starts at the upper left and goes down to the bottom right. In abstract notation, if our matrix A has entries given by A11, A12, and so on through A1n in the first row, A21, A22, through A2n in the second row, and so on, down to An1, N2, through Ann in the last row, then the trace of A is what you get by adding up these diagonal entries, the entries of the form a11 plus a22 plus a33 all the way through ann. But it's easier to talk about the trace in a specific example. For this 4x4 four four matrix B, the trace is what we get by adding up the four numbers on the diagonal, 4 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5, and these add up to 13. Let's see how trace interacts with other operations on matrices. Suppose that A and B are two square matrices of the same size, n by n matrices. And let's let K be a number, a scalar. Then what can we say about the trace of A plus B? Well, if we take two matrices and add them together, we do that by adding corresponding entries. So if we want to take the trace of A plus B, we're adding up all those numbers on the diagonal but that's just exactly the same thing as taking the sum of these three numbers and adding those three numbers. Therefore, the trace of A plus B is the same thing as the trace of A plus the trace of B. Similarly, when we subtract two matrices, we subtract corresponding entries. So the trace of A minus B, which is the sum of these numbers on the diagonal, it's the same thing as taking the sum of these, these numbers and subtracting all of these numbers. Therefore, the trace of A minus B is the same thing as the trace of A minus the trace of B. Let's look at a scalar multiple k times a matrix. I'll use the same matrix A. Scalar multiple means I just multiply all these entries by k. So if I want to take the trace of k times a, I'm adding up these numbers, which is the same thing as adding up these numbers and multiplying by k, since multiplication is distributive. Therefore, the trace of k times a is the same as k times the trace of a. Well, following the pattern here, you might expect that the trace of a times b is the trace of a times the trace of b, but in fact, this is not true. For example, here I have two two by two matrices, both of whose trace is zero, but when I take the product, I get a matrix whose trace is definitely not zero. But there is at least one thing we can say about the trace of a times b, and that's that it's equal to the trace of b times a. It's certainly true for this example, but it's actually true in general for any pair of n by n matrices. Suppose I have some general matrix A with entries A11, A12, through A1n on the first row, A21, A22, through A2n on the second row, and so on, and a general matrix B with its entries labeled B11, B12, B1n on the first row, and so on. To find the trace of A times B, we're going to have to add up the elements on the diagonal of A times B. Well, the entry in the first position of the diagonal of A times B is going to be the first row times the first column. So that would be A11, B11, plus A12, B21, plus A13, B31, 
all the way through a 1n, b, n1. That's how I would multiply this first row by this first column. So that would be the first entry I add up in the trace of AB. The next entry that I add up in the trace of AB would be the entry that ends up in the second row and second column of the product. So that's the entry I get by multiplying row two of A by column two of B. So that would have entries A21, B12, plus A22, B22, plus A23, B32, all the way through A to n, b, n, 2. The next entry of the trace would be the entry in the third row and third column of the product. And I add up more and more entries till I get to the nth row and nth column entry of the product. I'd have to add up all these numbers to get my trace of a, b. But what if instead I add up this way, sort of one column of this big mess at a time. This first column of terms actually corresponds, if I added all these up, that would be what I would get by multiplying the first row of B times the first column of A, right? I'd get B11 times A11, B12 times A21, that's this, B13 times A31, that's this, and at the end, B1n times An1. That's this right here. So this column of numbers that I circled in purple added up would be the first row of B times the first column of A. The second column added up would be the second row of B times the second column of A. Next purple column would be the third row of B times the third row of A, and so on. So each of these purple columns added up is an entry on the diagonal of the matrix B times A. And when I add all these numbers up, I'm really just adding up the trace of B times A. Trace of A times B is therefore equal to the trace of B times A. There's just a couple more properties I wanna look at. If we have a matrix A and I take its transpose, well, the transpose doesn't change the entries on the diagonal and therefore it doesn't change the trace. The trace of A transpose is the same as the trace of A. Last of all, what can we say about the trace of A inverse in terms of the trace of A? Well, it turns out pretty much nothing. As an example, suppose I have these two matrices, I'll call them A and B, that both have the same trace, right? These both have a trace of three. But if I calculate their inverses, the trace of A inverse is three, while the trace of B inverse is negative three-fourths. So there's no simple relationship between the trace of an inverse matrix and the trace of the original matrix. If you're especially observant, you might notice that for two by two matrices, there is a relationship between the trace of the inverse and the trace of the original and the determinant of the original. Namely, the trace of the inverse is the trace of the original divided by its determinant. But things get even more complicated for higher dimensional matrices, and there's no simple relationship between trace and inverse. This video was about the trace of a matrix and how it interacts with other operations on matrices. I wanna remind you that a trace is only defined for a square matrix.